pretty good. Yeah. So you better find something a lot yeah. better, man. <laughs> yeah. And then it is. And then esteemable people do esteemable things. It's like, yeah, well, you want to figure out, you want to figure out something that you're doing with your life that's worth not getting drunk and screwing up. Yeah. Part of the reason people drink alcohol is to get rid of their responsibility. I mean, that's, you know, you hear people drink because they have problems. It's like, yeah, yeah, no. Some people drink because they're anxious and alcoholics drink because they're in withdrawal. But young people drink because they're sick and tired of being responsible because it's annoying. It's like, so I'll drink enough. I won't care about the medium to long-term consequences because alcohol, that's exactly what alcohol does. It doesn't make you ignorant of the medium to long-term consequences, but it makes you not care about them. You know, you might say, well, why do people drink too much? It's like, if you like alcohol, that's a stupid question, right? It's like, why do people drink too much? Well, because it's great. Yeah. You know, it's like, okay, so why stop? Well, you do stupid things when you're drunk. You hurt yourself. You, you compromise your health. It's really hard on the people around you. You tend to turn into a liar and it screws up your life. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but it's pretty fun. Yeah, well, it is, but you need something better than that. And what's better isn't being straight and, 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 and not making mistakes. It's like that's all prohibition in some sense. What's better is, no, you need an adventure, man. You need to get out there and have something to do yeah. and, and something worth waking up for. And you need, that's the substitute for the addiction. Actually, the addiction is the substitute for that, if, if truth be known. If you are an effective writer and speaker and communicator, you, you have all the authority and competence that there is. The best thing you can do is read and write every day, a couple of hours every day. Write about things you find important and see if you can, see if you can discover what you believe to be true. And that'll build you a foundation. And it's unbelievably practical. Like if you look at people who are phenomenally successful across life, there's various reasons, but one of them is, is that they're unbelievably good at articulating what, they, what they're aiming at and strategizing and negotiating and, 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 and enticing people with a vision forward. It's like, get your words together, man. That's, that makes you unstoppable. Get your words together. Make yourself an articulate creature and then you're, you're deadly in the best possible way. Read great books. <laughs> really, man? And you've got these unbelievable libraries that are full of the writings of people who are, who are intelligent and articulate beyond comprehension. And you, know, and, and you can go there and you can learn all this. And you might think, well, why should you learn it? There's nothing more powerful than someone who is articulate and who can think and speak. It's power. And I mean power of the best sort. It's authority and influence and respectability and competence. And your highest skill is to be found in articulated speech. And if you're, if, you're, if you're a master at formulating your arguments, you win everything. And better than that, when you win everything, everyone around you wins too. Because to transform yourself into, let's consider, consider your transformation into something approximating the logos. It means you shine a light on the whole world. Well, there's nothing more exciting to do than that. There's nothing better you can possibly do. You transform yourself into something that's articulated and sensible and grounded in history and knowledgeable and wise, man. You can do anything you want and hopefully anything you want for good. Because if you have any sense, everything you want to do would be for the good because there's nothing more compelling or meaningful or, or useful in combating the tragedy of life than to, than to struggle with all your soul on behalf of the good. You know, I've really seen the benefits, for example, for weightlifting because I've watched people, because I'm 58, 50, how old am I, 56, I've really noticed the difference between people and when they age, um, between people who laid down a good physiological platform when they were young and those who didn't, because by the, if you haven't worked out weights particularly, I yeah. would say, you start to get pretty soft in your 30s and your cardiovascular system starts to go, and really early. The all other thing too is the best thing you can do to maintain cognitive uh, ability isn't to do exercises like lumosity. It's not brain exercises that keep you sharp. It's exercise. So if you're 50, both cardiovascular and weightlifting, if you're 50, you can restore your cognitive function to the level of a 30 year old through exercise. You're, through physical activity. Yeah, well, your brain is a very demanding organ. And if your cardiovascular system is compromised, then you get stupid. Wow. And so, yeah, it's really because so the less I, you I, move and the bigger mm, you get, the more stupid you become. Mm, mm.
Mm, yeah, well, Smaller because you, brain gets well you compromise, you compromise its function. Because the brain is, it, it, it's, it's, it's the organ that uses more. It's, it's very metabolically demanding. And so if you're not in phys good physical shape, then the, one of the things that suffers most greatly is your cognitive function. No one can live without a routine. You just forget that. If you guys don't have a routine, I would recommend, like, you get one going because you cannot be mentally healthy without a routine. You need to pick a time to get up. Whatever time you want, but pick one and stick to it because otherwise you dysregulate your circadian rhythms and they regulate your mood. I've told people to learn to use a schedule and people often hate schedules because they act as their own tyrants, right? They say, well, you have to do this unpleasant thing and then here's another unpleasant thing you have to do and then you have to do this unpleasant thing and you do that for about three days and you think, to hell with this, I'm not doing that, you know, and you fall off the wagon. That isn't what you're supposed to do with a schedule. You're supposed to use it to design the days that you would like to have if you were taking care of yourself. You wake up in the morning and you think, Here's five things I have to do that if I don't do, my life will be worse. It's like paying bills, for example, or, or, or taking out the garbage. It's like you have to do those because otherwise things degenerate. So you've got to put some of those in the schedule because otherwise tomorrow is worse than today and that's a bad trajectory. But you also want to build in things, you know, you've got to act in some sense like you're dealing with a relatively recalcitrant nine-year-old. It's like, so, well, here's some things you have to do, but Here's some things that if you do, you could reward yourself with. And if you get the balance there between obligation and reward right, then you'll find that you're motivated to do the things. And, and that's what you want to do. You want to do that so it's sustainable across days and weeks and months. And so you got to, you got to treat yourself like a good boss would treat a valued employee and not like a tyrant would treat a slave. Make friends with a calendar like Google Calendar or something like that. And I can tell you some tricks about that because really it is important. Like, and I'm not kidding around about this. So here's one way of thinking about making use of a schedule. Often people are afraid of schedules because they think of them as a trap. You know, you make a schedule and that's like this little prison that you have to live inside. And, you know, and all you're doing in your schedule is putting down things you have to do or should do. And so, you know, there's not a lot of fun in that. And so not only is it a trap or a prison, but it's kind of an unpleasant one. But a way to work with the schedule in a lot more sophisticated way is to, to think, well, I'm going to plan the next week, say, because you plan it day by day, but we'll take the week as the unit level of analysis and think, well, I'd like to plan a week I'd like to have. And then your schedule all of a sudden becomes a tool for increasing the quality of your life. And that's a whole different issue.